This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Hey, Open Alliance teams and fans, check out the new Open Alliance, FRC, FTC, and fun themed stickers and pins now available at firstupdatesnow.com slash stickers. We also have new Open Alliance and fun shirts arriving at firstupdatesnow.com slash shirts with free shipping. Or head over to firstupdatesnow.com to find all the links. And welcome back into the Open Alliance show, 1339. Angel Botics uh, with, uh, of course, their legendary uh, Kiss robots to bring in. That's just not that's not just the uh, keep it simple. It's also the uh, whole theme of this team this year. I love it. Uh, and uh, we had them uh, here on week one. And welcome back in uh, Dresden and Melissa. So welcome back, both of you. Do you mind just letting us know what you do on the team? And then we got a whole plethora of updates and many robots to talk about with your team. Uh, yeah, uh, I am Dresden. I am one of the programmers, and I am the driver for our main robot, which is this one here to my side. Uh, uh, my name is Melissa. I am the driver for this robot, and I am also part of Mechanical. You, you can't tease us like this. You got to tell us the names of the robots. <laughs> you want to go first? All right. This robot is named Heart of Chrome. Uh, it is all polished aluminum with uh, sparkly black gussets. Uh, this is Star Child, and the one behind us is Mr. Speed. And uh, as of course, we'll be going through all the different robots. Like, what's kind of the main differences? Like, can you give me a quick overview of what the main differences are between the three robots? Yeah, so um, these two are essentially the same. They're both geometrically and functionally the same. Um, the main difference is that this robot, Star Child, uses mainly rev components. So here we are using um, rev swerve modules and uh, Neo motors. And then if you want to talk about that robot. Yeah. And so this robot um, is very, very similar in uh, the concept of the design. The only difference is we're using uh, West Coast parts on our elevator. Um, and then we're also using the uh, Mark IV-I SDS modules instead of the rev ones. Uh, and that's that's those are the main differences. Uh, they're again very similar in design, and they'll hopefully perform similar. Also, with this robot, we are using a fifty bot elevator, and I think we're kind of doing the same with uh, this robot, but using the West Coast elevator instead. Yep. It's really cool to see a, a team do like almost like it's the same but completely different at the same time, right? Like you're, most teams when they're making multiple robots are like replicas of each other or a test bench essentially for for each one. Uh, what what inspires your team to like make uh, you know using such different components to accomplish the same task? Um, so we did this. Uh, we created Star Child to mainly highlight our partnership with Rev Robotics, and with our third robot, we wanted to have newcomers on our team have a chance to be able to have a hands-on experience with building a robot um, without exact leadership. And uh, we also wanted them to get a chance to have a leadership uh, position in the future as well. So we got a, a lot of videos that your team has shared uh, and that we're going to be talking about on there, uh, some CAD, some different drive testing and stuff. What do you want to start with this, uh, on, on your progress so far? Uh, let's start with uh, our position estimation work. Uh, that's that's been uh, consuming most of our programming for the past uh, few days, few weeks actually. We've been working with uh, we've got our uh, this ArduCam running uh, uh, orange, <laughs> running Photon Vision on an Orange Pi uh, five, and we're uh, it's, it's been really well, uh, working really well so far. Uh, yeah, so we've been doing pose estimation with it um, using. WPI libs uh, built-in pose estimation with uh, some uh, obviously photon lib uh, photon visions library uh, and we're using those for April tags but we actually have a limelight that's right now mounted on top of it but it's probably gonna be some slightly somewhere else in the future which we're using for the retroflective tape so we're planning on doing both types of vision uh, to automate our placing process are they both done at the same time, or is it like you, you choose on one match, you do one versus the other? Uh, we're going to do both of them at the same time because we have two different coprocessors, so we're able to uh, have all that processing power. 
Very cool. What's next on your robot? Um, well, so also with Bose Estimation, uh, so in, in the future, we're uh, looking to get it a bit better because that's what we've been spending so long doing is tuning it. Uh, we had some problems with the yaw from the from Photon Vision. It was it had a lot of jitter, and so we actually had to like swap that over to using the yaw from the gyro because we were getting a lot of noise in the uh, vision aspect of the pose estimator. Uh, and then also we are planning on tuning the standard deviation at different distances to try and get a more accurate result. I was like, you got a lot going on there. But um, so what's the, so you, you've got these different robots and you're, you're going to be doing different things with them. How do you imagine tuning your software differently for the two different models? Um, so ideally, uh, we write as much code or we transfer as much code from this one as possible over to this one uh, because they are relatively similar. The one difference is right now we're planning on uh, using Falcons uh, for this elevator versus uh, Neos for this elevator just for uh, ease of use and programming in the short term uh, because this robot is going to uh, hopefully... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the Green County Regional in week six versus this one. Uh, we are going in to the St. Louis Regional in week two and the Colorado Regional in week four. And so, wait a second. Just, wait, yeah, wait a second. So, so, so you are so you are taking so you're going to compete at uh, this is this is this is breaking news, Tyler. This right? is this is new stuff. So you're competing at three three different regionals, three different events, but you're going to run different robots at different events. Yes. Yep. This is this is no bag, Tyler. This, this is what this no is very BattleBots esque, Greg. If you ask me, so <laughs> yeah, this is this is what no bag means. I love yeah, it. Yeah, this I is. love it. Do you want to explain? And then you've got a secret robot you haven't you haven't shared yet, which is the one you're bringing to championship. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll see about that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to explain our philosophy behind uh, having a different robot? different competitions uh well with uh the star child it's mainly for students who are getting ready to enter leadership positions and getting a sense of how to manufacture build code a robot in general and this is mainly being built not only by people like in sophomore uh, grade but also um people that are wanting to work on this specific robot or have specific set of uh, work ethics that would lead them to work with this robot. And then with Heart of Chrome, uh, this is mainly for our show robot. Um, we have the metal polished and everything's, this is mainly our show robot and it is used to really exemplify our KISS theme this year. Yeah, although they both sport the uh, metal and black yeah. painted metal uh, aesthetic. So looking uh, at some other uh, attributes of your robots uh, for things, so we, we've kind of talked about philosophy and stuff, but there's a lot of superstructure that's on your robot that we haven't really mentioned yet uh, as it goes through. So kind of walk us through where that progress has been on different uh, components of your robot as you've been going through uh, this build process so far. Yeah. So with this robot, we we're still working on the superstructure. Um, we're finalizing our elevator at the moment and we're also on the process of wiring everything right now and uh this robot uh it's taken a bit more time to get uh into the state that it is uh we started work on this one first and this one was basically where it is now basically done by the time we were really doing anything with this uh i think that was mainly because we wanted to like get stuff out of the way problem solve everything on this robot get an idea of how to build it how uh our cat is going to translate into actual uh materials and then apply that to this robot, even though it's slightly different with the slightly different elevator, but it's again, very similar in design. Uh, CAD wise, you're going in, we're showing a, an image of, uh, of your CAD right now on screen for things. So uh, when you were looking at design build these, is it the same students are designing these? Do you have different sub teams that, uh, or different like groups based on age? How does that work in regards to actually designing when you have different components for a robot? Um, in terms of CAD, we do have a specific sub team doing it, but it's open for everyone. Uh, you don't have to be specifically good at CADing, but um, it's a place where people will be able to 
learn how to CAD and people that have, let's say, a higher skill of CADing will be able to teach uh, people that don't so that in the future they would be able to learn as well. Yeah, uh, I believe the both of both of these robots was done by the same three kids. Yeah. So looking into uh, you know the, the next few weeks uh, as we go in here with three competitions coming up, obviously lots to do in that in time. Uh, we won't be speaking to you until you get to competition. So I'd love to hear what are the next steps for Angelbotics uh, with your robot, both uh, mechanical and programming side. Anything else from a, a team perspective? Your team has always been known for such great imagery as well too. Uh, so anything else uh, to add on those fronts? Uh, yeah, we've been, uh, one, uh, thing we've been doing recently is we've been experimenting with different, uh, vectored intake wheels. Uh, as you see here, we've got, uh, they're a lot smaller, so we're going to show some of those now. Yeah. So as you see, one of them is significantly smaller <laughs> than the normal, uh, I believe two inch, uh, vectored intake wheels. Uh, and so my notes yeah, say they're the world's smallest at 1.125 inches. Is that right? Uh, Around there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't, is, is that verified by the way? I have zero clue. Like if that is like I'm, the smallest ever, but that'd be super cool. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the person who made them is saying that he verified them. <laughs> awesome. I, I like that. I like that your vectored intake wheel can fit in a bearing hole. Like there's something... <laughs> There's there's something amazing like about that that I feel like if those were hanging around my team's shop that that's like that's where they would end up. <laughs> uh, as we start to wrap up, what kind of like testing did you do with those wheels uh, to determine like that's even viable to do in the first place? Uh, well, I mean, it. I think it took a minute to design them, and uh, we don't actually have our intake uh, in in the real world yet. It's still in CAD. Uh, We've built our elevators and we're still, I think we finalized our, in, our, our first version of the intake at this point, uh, but we still need to cut out everything and build it up. Uh, and then we're going to do more testing because we, we haven't had these wheels for quite long enough. Well, I can't wait to see what that progress looks like. Uh, please uh, keep posting more and more. Angelbox, you do such a great job with your uh, blog posts. Uh, so make sure you do check them out on their Chief Delphi blog and, of course, on the OA Discord uh, as well, too, because that's that's really cool. I can't wait to see more of that. And you might have some teams interested in uh, in having those wheels as well, too. So I'd be interested to see uh, uh, who, who wants to implement that on their robot also. So wish you best of luck, uh, of course, with three events coming up. Can't wait to see your uh, progress and results on that. But uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for first students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. FRC Premiere Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premiere 23. Premiere Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere 23. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.